Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 78 of Final Boss TV, your Wild and Gay Radio Show. I'm your host, my name is Adam K.A.K.A. Bay, and today we're talking about uh, eating your vegetables. Oh, no, wait, that's 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 something else. That's that's the other show that I've... No, we're talking about broccoli, though. Broccoli is involved. We've got Rest of Druids today. The last healer episode for World of Drone number four, we bring up uh, Holy and Disciplined Priests. But, of course, I think the other culprit might not be the class itself. We'll see what happens when we get our experts on here today. Uh, so, uh, for the healer episodes, he was kind of helping me guest co-host up, but now he's in the other seat. We're gonna ask him questions now. Uh, well, he's gonna get cry about stuff, I guess. It's fine. There's yes. Affinity. There he is. Yes! <laughs> I look forward to complaining more. I can never complain enough about things and stuff. <laughs> things and stuff? <laughs> yes. Specifically in that order, too. Okay. Things and oh, stuff. Goodness. And then back on the show after my like over a year, episode twenty six, if I'm not rem if I remember correctly. There's Jar. Hello, sir. Welcome back. Hey, how's everyone doing? I think we're ready to do this. I think. Well, I'm I'm ready to sit here and laugh at you guys back and forthy and taking over the whole show. I think that's, that's okay. What we're gonna have. <laughs> I, I got I got my box of tissues here. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. I don't, I don't actually have any of those. You have you have a giant bedspread behind you. You can just use that as yeah, a giant, giant yeah. tissue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's great. It's yeah. fine. It's great. It's fine. <laughs> fair, fair warning, I'm still getting over a sinus thing, so if you hear me sniffle and you don't like it, that's just too bad. <laughs> that's just too bad. I don't care. All right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, we, we get into this a little more later in the show about uh, just sort of the, the healing meta, I'm sure, will come up more or less the entire episode about how things were we wish would have happened but didn't really get there. So that's why I should have named the show that. Like, it almost never got there. But So what do you guys think of Warlord so far? I'm going to go to Jar on this one first. Uh, we'll see what he thinks. It's a safe what, bet. Yeah. What, what, what do you think of <laughs> Warlords of Draenor so far? So how has the launch been? The raid's been going so far. You're working on Blackhand like I am right now. So you're probably mm -hmm. not even healing the fight. But uh, oh, nope. <laughs> and I'm not even DPSing the fight either. During most of Phase 2, I just stand in a corner. So, I mean, oh, what do you, you think? Oh, you got that rule? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, what do you think of Warlord, sir? What do you think? Um, I don't know. It's hard to say. Overall, um, there are some hit or miss things uh, tangentially outside of raids, like garrisons that started off strong and then obviously got dull. Uh, the raids have been interesting, but I think what it's just done is kind of perpetuate this issue where Blizzard has grand designs for the direction of the game. Um and really just kind of fails at implementing them in the long-term plan. Mm. I mean, I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's just more orcs, so thematically it's not anything particularly exciting. Uh, there's been some really cool encounters. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as we'll get into it more later, but there are some more underlying issues. Yeah. I mean, have you, have you felt like the... The raids have been fun so far. Is the expansion good? What do you think of Garrisons? Yeah. Woo. Ah. I actually I actually really liked them to start. Like I, yep. I liked the idea of them to begin with. Um, but I feel like they've they've kind of gotten dull and all they do is create this insular experience where people just kind of sit in their garrison all the time. So are they really accomplishing anything at that point? I don't really know. It it kinda has stalled out quickly. Yeah. I mean the rating has been fun. Um, there have been a number of encounters that I've definitely enjoyed working on, um, but unfortunately, it's very hit or miss as far as encounters that Restoration Druids are enjoyable to play in. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about how this whole like inclusive system where everyone's in their garrison. I actually uh, finished my auction house today, so one less reason to leave my little garrison home away from home, as it were. That's fun. Yeah. I felt kind of dirty buying things in my garrison and then going to my own mailbox and then logging out and not even leaving it. But is it the point, though? I don't, uh... All right, Skylar, your turn. I uh, I was just actually <laughs> thinking about it. The, the rating 
content is it's enjoyable kind of like siege was where for the throughput healers during progression it was fun like when i was on my monk and siege i was doing very very well and then you know just like i was at the start of this one and then it's just kind of like as everybody else gets more power and more gear resto just kind of falls flat and it becomes not as exciting um is there really anything to the expansion if there weren't garrisons, though? Like, what would we actually be doing? I think that's sort of what Jar opens up with, is that there's lots of front-loaded stuff. Yeah. And, like, there was all, like, the open world. got the whole Draenor is obviously the side of Timeless Isle. Like, I can go out here, kill all these rares, find all these these hidden treasures, you know. I went treasure hunting. Garrison I grind. Yeah, all the garrison grinding, but then two months in. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly it's like there's nothing left to do i'm just trying to find yeah. a way for my garrison resources to not clip over 10k mm -hmm. like just find something to do with them but we have i'll give i'll give chat room this one everyone gets one uh the big thing you can do right now if everyone's wondering about like how garrison resources are gonna be spent uh i have two alts that are gonna be barn farming for fell blood when the new patch comes out so what you can do is you can dump all your resources into the barn rush orders that when the new patch comes out, trap a whole bunch of the new beasts, fill your barn up, then just dump it all with the rush orders, then fill it up again, dump it all on rush orders, fill it up again, so you can make the fell stage five and six things when the uh, patch comes out. But that's that's what I'm doing with mine. But that's, yeah, that's fun. Because otherwise that, you're just going to sit on nothing. I mean, you got to have four to five K for your shipyard, which people are like, how do you get that? It's so... <clears throat> It's so easy to get resources, guys. I don't. I don't even know anymore. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm covered in them, man. Covered in them. All the things and yep. stuff. So the the transition from mop to warlords. Then let's go on that. So uh, I have to ask everybody, of course, how the ability printing went for your class, right? So eh. tree printing, which I dig in my research. You lost nourish. Eh. Genesis was changed, and then you got uh, boom shroom was disappeared. Now, so now you just drop. Uh, efflorescence uh, all the time with the little mushroom in the middle. The, the boom um, shroom's a big deal, though. Right. I think. Yeah. That's a huge... I, well, huge resto, resto shamans have it now. Kind of. <laughs> it's, it was, a, it, was a, an, as it was a mechanic that went through multiple awful iterations, and even in its final iteration, it's rewarding you for overheal, which is mechanically unsound and inefficient. So... Get that out of the way. Yes, how you had to make the, the the shroom work is not ideal. However, it was one of the few sources for significant burst healing that we had in our disposal. Sure. And losing that, there really wasn't any anything to make up for it. And the promise was, no, 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 guys, Genesis is going to do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> did, yeah, did it, did it work, Affinity? Did it work? No. no. I mean, not not in a rating scenario. I mean... I know it's early in the show, and I know the Blizzard devs hate this word. Hi, Blizzard devs! It's clunky. It was really clunky. Um, and there's really no other way to put it other than Shroom Bloom was... It, it served a really good purpose, and it made Druid more or less viable from where they were previously, but it's it was a very uh, underwhelming mechanic that just awarded poor gameplay in the end run. Right. Um, which was okay, but it it wasn't really like there was no compelling gameplay behind the spell. And then they removed it, and you know, like like Jar said, the, the compensation more or less was nothing because you just you never you never use the spell otherwise. Like I, I have it key bound, but I mean, I don't remember the last time I hit it. Other than I'm like, okay, I want to try and snipe heals, Is, like. Yeah. To, to my knowledge, looking at what Genesis is, isn't it sort of like a, a very much weaker, um, like, revival? Because it makes all your hots, like, splash to heal based on their healing to other people? Or but it's based on the healing left, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since you're casting you don't have enough constantly. rejuice out for it to really be effective. And half mm. of them are, you know, have only four or five seconds left on them. It, it, it's extremely hit or miss. It... You know, if it was more like uplift, it might be a different story. But basically, it right. fires off all your rejuves. Some of them might heal for very little, and now all of them are gone. And now you're going to go and have to put some more out there. That's a lot of mana, too. My goodness. Um... I mean, from a single target, like early challenge modes when we were doing it to get more gear and healing was a pain. Like, Genesis wasn't a bad option for single target healing. If you've got, you know, two, two rejuves on your tank... 
you're like, okay, how, how can I do other healing in a, in a quick global? Like that was, that was a decent way to do it. But typically in a, in a 20 man mythic raid setting, uh, or any raid setting, really, you just, there, there's really no benefit to using it, unfortunately. Yeah. And your biggest value in the raid is having rejuves out there all the time, especially when the damage is irregular or imperfect. So you really don't want to get rid of that. Yeah, it 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 just feels like an interesting because yeah, it, it almost like it's the two steps forward is you getting all your rejuves out to make sure your healing is doing good, and then you just like you destroy it all. It just feels like you just kind of don't ever really need to use it. So that was the that was the response, of course, to removing the boom shroom, and now you just put you just put efflorescence down wherever you want, which that's like the whole like I know when we we're progressing on mythic blast burner, so I was like, stand inside the efflor, that's where all the raid healing is going. Just stand right there. It's like a it's a marker on the ground it helps Ugh. your raid move. I hated but, on that fight. Like, but that's all it. Yeah. Um, it's got a little bit of gameplay to it, like Flow by itself, I guess, because you kind of look at a fight and you go, right. like, Blast Furnace was a great example where you want to sit on your mana, and you're like, okay, mana's tapped, like, is it really worthwhile to drop in Phase 1? Or in Phase 2, like, how many times do you want to refresh drop it? Like, is there is it worthwhile to not have it for a couple of seconds because you're going to move and you're going to have to refresh it anyways? Like, things like that, but, I mean, it's it's healing rain. It is. It really is. That's, it's that's not, all it is. It's more mana than Healing Rain. So, uh, on top of that, uh, Swift Rejuve was cut, which is like the whole like super quick GCD to like spam Rejuves out there, even though you still Rip. Rejuve Blanket. So, um, I'll bring up the Tranquility change, and I'll just step away from the mic for a moment. Uh, oh. Let's talk about a Tranquility well, change. Well, the, the change is not really the problem. I mean, the, the, the mm. big problem can be discussed later. The, the change... Um, so I actually liked the hot aspect before. I mean, I, I understand sure. it's it, it it's kind of six of one, half dozen of another, because uh, it gave you a trailing edge, you know, kind of when the, after the duration ended. Uh, now uh, it deals with high intensity damage better. If they actually went with their proposed damage model, where the raid would sit at some level of you know depleted health for a period of time or sure. slower damage, the hot mechanic would work better. Uh, however, since they've unfortunately abandoned that in their infinite wisdom and gone to kind of more punchy, uh, bursty damage models, uh, the new version of Tranquility does perform better, although it will obviously overheal uh, significantly in right. some cases. And in, in all cases. Yeah, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> Sorry. Like, <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> is it try because to, it, try to be nice. It does a lot of healing, right? But is it because it takes so long to do the healing by the time you actually get down to the last couple of ticks, they're all just wasted anyway? Should it do them faster? We thought this before the show about like what they could do to change Tranquility to make it better. And I brought up, like, why isn't it more like Malfurion's Tranquility and Here's the Storm? Where you can Trank and then still do other things. It's sort of like this, like, you radiate this healing for this short period of time. But because when you're Tranking in the game right now, you're stuck channeling it. And that's... Well, and that's why it does as much healing as it does, is because in certain situations where you can afford to not move for the full duration and right. people need the healing, your tranquility, especially when coupled with Heart of the Wild, is going to do just an insane amount of healing. And it's it's going to, you know, be a huge portion of your total breakdown uh, for your throughput on specific boss encounters. Uh, but easily as... Like 3 million with Heart of the Wild. Oh yeah, easily. Uh, but as a side effect, it makes it really weak on a boss encounter like... Black Hand Phase 1, where there's a lot of movement, and if you don't have a fox, which, hello, that's going away, uh, you basically can't trank, and it's not going to be effective. Right. Um, it, it's an interesting trade-off, I th and, uh, yeah, we'll get into it more a little bit later, but yeah. it's the, the trade-off, more or less, is if you can channel it and people need the healing, sure. it's really potent, and that that's a good and a bad thing at the same time. Right. You talk about being things are being removed as well. So, uh, moment of silence for Innervate, everyone. No, yeah, no moment no. of silence. That doesn't need a moment of silence. All. It was one of the first mana regen oriented cooldowns but, ever put into uh, World of Warcraft. It was and... so boring, though. No, it is. It is totally. Oh, it and, was. It was terrible. And and yeah. for anybody who rated, um, like kind of hardcore end game progression in classic, right or vanilla, whatever, has a really love-hate relationship because I gave mine away all the time. All the time, oh, yep. I was a vanilla rest of druid. I know what you mean. Yep. 
I remember being in my, you know, you have eight priests in for Saffron 40 Man, and I was in a group, and I just had to feed the priest my innervate yep. so he could keep prayer of healing. Yep. And that was it. It's yep. very exciting. Woo! Innervate bot. I actually stumbled upon um, the very first Algalon kill that I did. Oh, uh, like there was just there was a video like uh, we were talking about it midwinter uh, because apparently um, Chi Chan was in that guild the time that I was also in that guild for a brief period and I got in for their progression kill because uh, someone was having internet issues and I was looking at my mana and the boss is at like eighty percent and I'm at like ten percent mana and I'm just like what is going on and then all of a sudden I'm at full mana and I'm like oh that's right innervate. <laughs> like, that's how it worked when it was on a six-minute cooldown, is you'd get down to, like, no mana, you'd pop it, then you'd be at full mana, and then that's you right. would just hit it on cooldown all the time. And then they change it to half-effective, but three-minute cooldown, and it was still the same thing. And it was fun for a brief period when you wanted to innervate swap with another Resto Druid. Like, yep, I kind yep, yep. of enjoyed screaming at the other Resto Druid to use his innervate on me right when I wanted it. But uh, outside of that, you're below 80% mana, use it, use it on cooldown thereafter. It's just, it was, yep. it was boring. It, they could have done something with it, maybe. I don't know what they could have done with it to right. have kept it around. But as a whole, I would rather know that I've got passive regen that I can work with over the course of a fight as opposed to like you have to factor in your innervates as well. And it's just, it was just an extra button on your bar that you would always yeah. hit. Yeah, and having smoother, smoother matter return is better for smarter gameplay. Um, it's why things like early on in um, in Warlords, the candle, you know, basically was like an innervate. You know, you have right. this very spiky return, and it returned a ton of mana initially, uh, basically an innervate. And you know that that's not really a great way to play. You don't want to live off fumes, then have mana come back, then live off fumes, then have mana come back. It's not ideal. Having a smoother regen pattern is better overall. Right. And you guys talk about this mana regen pattern right now, and that's the one I want to get into is that this active mana regen system, again, more of these thoughts going into beta that were like, well, we're going to make mana matter for healers, and we're going to give them all these like different little iterations that they can like get their mana back and like all this stuff like that. And we they were talked, awful. We've talked to Mystery for Monks, and they're the ones that really have something in that regard right now, sort of. I guess you could, you could say Dis Priests do as well, but there's, there's no... Active mana regen gameplay for druids? I guess wrath is free, right? So just spam wrath. Let your mana regen. Yay. Super exciting to just like either stand there and do nothing or cast wrath. Yeah, I don't... <sighs> yeah. Not really fun. No. I mean, Dream of Scenarius is... I mean, we'll get into that. Is is kind of a situationally interesting talent. But no, I, I don't know if I'd really classify that as active regen. It's just actively choosing to not cast not. spells. Not cast as it cost mana. Yeah, it gives something to do when you're waiting around. I'm okay it's with having something like that, where like that—that's kind of the draw right now to Mistweaver Monk as opposed to Arresto Druid. In my sure. mind, is it's like Mistweaver Monk. It's like okay, there's not a lot of healing to be had. What do you do? Well, you you can fist weave. It's not really super effective, exactly, and you're not exactly. making a significant difference. But at least you have buttons that you can hit, and you kind of feel like you're actually doing something for the raid right. as opposed to standing there because that's i mean that's really what you end up wanting to do if you're trying to be effective with your healing uh outside of like imperator where you know doc was actually pretty strong mm -hmm. but even in that case where you were casting tons and tons of wraths over the course of the fight it at best it was like eight or nine percent of my total throughput for the encounter so it wasn't like game breaking or anything to actually be doing it you could have stood there and done nothing instead and still been yeah right about the same on throughput so this isn't in the notes, because I wanted to kind of blind you both with this to get your live reactions. Do you think that the healing gameplay model, do, do you miss the five-second rule? Do you think bringing that back would make give something the healers had to pay attention to a little bit more, or was that just an archaic thing that doesn't need to come back? I think it's pretty archaic. The healer rotation and the wanding for mana thing just needed to stay where it died. Like, it's just yeah. not fun. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't like in vanilla where I swapped a spirit staff on and then just sat there. <laughs> yeah, right. Time. You know, it, it was just stupid. Like, it, it mana management, it, first of all, the problem is Blizzard has, even when they propose those little variations, like, mm -hmm. um, kind of early on, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to try to give each healer, like, its own little active mana yeah, ability. They were, not, they were not created equal. Uh, no, <laughs> manatee um, equal. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 
Yeah, like they were all, you know, druids had to sit around for like eight seconds without casting a spell or something completely awful like that. And, you know, I don't have faith in their ability to make it interesting and balanced, especially in the hectic mythic metagame right. between the classes. So if, if you're not going to be able to make it equal across the board, I think don't rock that boat. Yeah. yeah. Standing there is not fun or compelling gameplay. Yes. Just just standing there like waiting is is not fun. Sure. Uh, and that's that's probably why I've had a bit of a draw to to DPS in the last couple of weeks, where it's more or less like you're always doing something. And maybe they should consider doing that with boss encounters, even if it's just like a more encounters with kind of a passive AOE component to it, where there's at least something for you to always be doing as a healer. I, I think would be a, a better base model to be looking at in the future. Yeah, I'm just not. I guess it would take a lot of dev time to really get in there and give a reason to have something else to do other than just healing as a healer. And that's right. why I kind of brought it up on the on the monk show. Monkey was jabbing us in chat. Is that they have such great like polar opposites to do, and they can heal doing both of them. One is you know mana eh, neutral ish, and then one is actually spending mana. And so they have an option. But I think that like. You know, as we will soon find out later on the Dispre show, they spam bubbles, um, either instant cast ones or cast time ones. You guys just spam hots or spam wrath, but you have no, you know, there's a whole different like set of like what your your thought process is there. You know, the gameplay mentality of a monk can change radically going from fist weaving to mist weaving, whereas a druid just like wrath, yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Ooh. Wrath. Great like, can, like, can, can <laughs> like a Resto Druid, if there was a way back in the day, Resto Druid would be able to, like, I was an old one, right? You could actually, like, cast spells or even go, like, cat and do something. You felt like you were doing something as a druid, not just, like, a tree that just stands there and just radiates healing the whole fight. I don't know if they can do something about that, though, to make you more engaged with being a druid, not just a a giant tree that stands there and heals all day. Well, to be fair, creating interesting gameplay for non DPS is, is tricky because True. we have very specific roles. It's the same reason why they struggle with really creative reasons to have multiple tanks and fights. I mean, how nine times out of ten it's just get debuff tank swap. Pretty much. Right? I mean that's pretty much what it is. It, they they're really struggling to have kind of that compelling thing outside of just do your job. I mean, and that's been that way for a while now. Yeah. I don't... I don't know. And they can't reinvent the wheel, obviously. WoW is a very ingrained Holy Trinity-style gameplay. But I think within those classes... We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. So we're in Blackheart Foundry now, right? We've been there for a little while yet. You know, a healthy amount of time right now. Uh, I guess Jar and I are still working on the last encounter here within Blackhand. So... Healing situations that Restro Druids are excelling at. Uh, I want to bring up the the counter argument to that. I would say obviously not Black Hand. Are you no. uh, are you actually balanced for Black Hand, or are you actually healing it right now, Jar? Uh, no, I'm being sat for Black Hand. <laughs> rip, <laughs> rip. Not a Dispriest or Paladin rip. No, where uh, I mean, yep. it's uh, we'll talk about it more later. But the hierarchy stands that we are fourth on the list as far as the class to bring, and. Um, our guild has two good paladins and a disc priest, so that means our shaman fills the last spot. Just how that goes. Yep. Before Black Hand, though, how was Russell <laughs> Druid healing? Like on certain fight to fight bases, were there were there really strong fights, really poor fights? Like, what did you what did you feel going through all the whole progression tier affinity? Like, what, how did that work out for you? I felt like. During early beta, there were a lot of boss encounters that looked like the druids were going to really, really excel at. Um, i trying to remember. Chromog? Is that the the nerd that's like... The hands. Yeah. That looked like we were going to do really well at. Uh, Beast Lord Darmek, we looked like we were going to do very, very well at. Blast Furnace, we looked like we were going to do very, very well at. And we kind of sort of just ended up in the middle of the pack across the whole board for a lot of those because they ended up tuning the damage down from where they were testing it on beta. Now, I understand that they overtune stuff now on beta rather than undertune it, sure. and then they'll pull back from there, but they they definitely miss the ball from he from a healing standpoint on a lot of, um, on a lot of the mechanics to where it, it was just kind of like the druid 
triage style of, of healing didn't really come into an important role. And there was a lot of boss fights this tier that I was looking at that I was kind of going, man, I wish I could actually play Boomkin because I would probably be serving the raid better if I was Boomkin. Like Iron Maiden's right. a great example where the resto druid, like I was only in on that fight over like the monk because we were doing uh, an entangling roots strategy on the boat. CC like if we, strat, yeah. yeah, if we yeah, weren't doing we a CC do. strat, then the resto druid wouldn't have been needed. Or if we had another boomkin, the resto druid wouldn't have been needed. Um, and that's, I guess it was great that I was in for the boss encounter, but I mean, when you get into phase three or two or whatever you want to call it, the final phase, <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, you're just kind of still standing around like on our kill. Like I'm pretty sure if you go back and watch the video, you can hear me go, screw it. I'm just going to wrath spam the turrets. Like <laughs> That's about right. Uh, we did, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, uh, I mean, really, it, I mean, that that really speaks volumes. I mean, during progression, we're really only good. I mean, AoE, we just kind of throw it out there. We're just a wet blanket healer. We are, if we're not tranking, we're putting out a modest amount of healing and, you know, we're really not filling any critical roles. And unfortunately, what becomes more irritating is at the start of a tier, it's a little bit better during progression. But as everyone gears up and the, all the other healers are, you know, 700 plus eye level or whatever, their scaling is just out of control. And I literally just try to get whatever healing I can snipe or pick up or scrounge around for after that. And it becomes a lot less fun. I got so excited because I finally had enough spirit to actually do stuff so that I could actually cast other spells. And then I started casting all of these other spells, like constantly casting rejuves and stuff. Because I, I've always healed like this expansion with like a, a really heavy focus on wild growth primarily, and then a couple of rejuves here and there, but not really. I finally got to the spirit level where I'm like, screw it, I can rejuve code as much as I want and not really worry about it. And I started doing that, and I'm like, my healing's going down every week. <laughs> it's what? like you, you get more gear, but the healing's going down because <sighs> the absorbs are going up, and it's just like... Pretty much. I started doing, and we'll talk about it more, I started messing around with probably the least the least intelligent talent combination of ramping growth and wild and soul of the forest just because i wanted to just make every wild growth count because of the closest thing to bursty oh, okay. aoe that i could do and i was just like all right screw it and then my my healing like if you look at like my breakdown of spells it's like wild growth is just the bar all the way to the right and everything else is just tiny going down because yeah. it it in in a way, I sort of feel like Resto Druids, when I was looking at these show notes and, and pulling them all together, almost feels sort of like the arms warrior for the healer. Whereas you have all these other things that do healing, kind of like an arms warrior has all these things that do damage. But all that matters for them is execute, and all that matters for you is wild growth, if it matters when gear isn't overly, and then just tranquility. And that's sort of all that you have? Because... I mean, our, our our spells are if the top four spells is Trank, Wild Growth, Rejuve, and Wild Mushroom in some different order depending sure. on your talent choices and fight. I'm just looking at like, obviously certain spells will be more powerful than others and more beneficial than others, but I've always sort of wondered about that. I guess we'll find out what a you know a, a log looks like with a Shield Priest uh, in a couple weeks from now when it's like seventy percent one spell. So I guess that's a thing. But I've always sort of found that that just can't be very fun. Like you have a power button, I'm sure. But, mm, I don't know. You talk about healer hierarchy, though, Jar. And you can break down. What do you think that the, like the six healer hierarchy is going to be in the, in the top order there um, as we move forward into this? Uh, I mean, it, it pretty much stands to reason. Paladins and priests are at the top of your priority list. Um, ideally... Uh, I personally feel like two paladins, one disc priest is a pretty strong combination because the paladins don't step on each other's toes. Sure. Um, and they do a significant amount of healing and absorbs. Um, after that, uh, Resto Druid, um, you know, wow, uh, Resto Shaman. Resto Shaman, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Resto Shaman is kind of your fourth slot. Uh, they come with a boatload of cooldowns. They have a lot of great uh, direct healing. Um, spammable Jane heal is pretty awesome. I think after that, it's 
Mist Weaver, Resto Druid, and then Holy Priest, I guess, at the bottom. It's it's funny how the the hierarchy seems to have changed from when we had the Resto Shaman episode, though. Yep, it has. Um, and it's you know Band Aid fixes by Blizzard, but it's also because as absorbs get more potent and healers are fighting for scraps, uh, the direct healing from Shaman ends up just sniping out ahead of the the heal over time things. Yep. Uh, one one thing that is really important to mention, I think. In a mythic raid setting, on average right now, you four heal bosses. Every now and again, you five heal in a boss encounter, but for the important fights, you're typically four healing. Right. How do I say this without screaming? <laughs> no, no, just, there's, just there's do it. Six, there's six <laughs> healing specs. There are six healing specs. Well, yeah. five, because holy priest, good joke. Uh, yeah, yeah. You should never ever in a scenario where you want four healers make two classes mandatory right even if you only want one holy paladin i mean typically you you want to run two but i mean it's even bad enough that when you look at a healing comp and the, it was this way before and they changed it was your comp would always be you want a resto shaman because mana tide and uh 10 hp so they got rid of that and now it's like okay why the hell do you bring a resto shaman? And then they buffed them. And it's like four raid spots, disc priest, holy paladin. Mm -hmm. Do I do this? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> another holy pally. Right. But I mean, even if you're you're saying you only want one holy pally, you have you have two more spots. And there's so many options that are there. The classes should be better balanced. You, you shouldn't have to Disc Priest, Holy Paladin, Resto Shaman, and then your fourth spot is just kind of like, do you bring another Paladin? It, it is, the argument there, too... a Hot Healer? We brought that up on the Holy Paladin episode with, with Double Beacon, being a big proponent in this, like, Holy Paladin mandatory play style. And in the breakdown of four healers and Mythic, if you have one healer that can effectively heal both tanks at the same time and you only bring two tanks in a mythic raid setting, you're always going to bring a holy paladin. And then if you bring right. two, it's even better because they can just yeah. beacon, double beacon each tank and they can just heal the raid and their tanks still getting healed. Like that is, that is a huge problem with the healing, like, I guess, metagame. And then of course, always just, you know, they bring an absorb. It's not as much as a this priest absorb. But always, as any healing mantra goes, absorbing and not taking damage is better than having to heal it. Right. Yep. They're just, especially with them changing Devo Aura, which was needed, don't get oh, me wrong. Good, it good, was good, needed. Good. Mm. But that makes Holy Paladin even more important to want to have two in a raid yep. setting. Yep. Because what, what's the point in the Resto Druid? You no longer have a Fox. You don't have an Amp Magic to make your Tranquility do more. So you have to try and game it by being able to plant and them actually needing the healing right then and there, which you can just replace with Revival because it does the same thing, but it's better Instantly. at the moment. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of like they need to make it so that you don't have to actually look at a boss encounter and go, okay, two, you know, half of your healing roster is already predetermined. Correct. And then the other ones are throughput healer or hot throughput healer. Which one's going to be better? And it's it's a pretty clear cut answer, uh, and that's it's it's unfortunate that it's that way. Yeah. Honestly, in an ideal world, they need to make end bosses require five healers. I feel like four healers is while it works and it's fine and dandy. It's it's so hard to justify having five or six healers on roster, right. and then you only want to bring in four, and then you always want to go with the four strongest because there's such a huge disparity amongst all the healing classes based on what's mandatory and what's not. They they need to fix it, that, please, that, Blizzard. That, that's making me like grind my hands right now because you're saying you want a raid encounter to have five healers as like the design point but then that means we're gonna be back to like heroic witch king style raid damage where it's your dead or alive no right and it you shouldn't be that though hopefully not what do you got jar no i just i mean they, they, their intent with their new damage model which was to have um you know damage can come more often but at a different pace mm -hmm. and therefore you know the healers they wanted four to six healers with the intent being five was average and four would only be for, you know, those kind of bleeding edge situations. But 
I don't think there's ever been a situation outside of a couple fights when learning and mythic blast furnace on farm where we've considered going to five healers. Like it, that's just never really even become a thing. So yeah, yeah that we're in a weird place for healing right now. Uh, I think DPS we have all of our ups, ups, ups and downs and who's better at what and obviously rogue superior class for black hand. I guess I would argue that I was the best class for Chogal, but like that's they nerfed it after you know Iliago killed it with Paragon, so that died. Uh, but healing right now is so because all the tanks right now, even like some of the tanks I've talked to, are thinking like Guardian Druid, like the best tank going into the next patch because the buffs just got after the Guardian Druid episode we just came off of last week. So it's like they have they have they're all looking strong, but the healer problem right now is so awkward and tumultuous. It, it really needs to be noted, though, that this whole healer model change thing, th this isn't the first time. This is technically the third time they've tried to change the healer model to be right. what they want it to be. Like in Cataclysm, when they added in um, spells, they're more, you know, when they when they tried to make it, you've got a, a quick heal that costs a lot of mana. You've got a slow big heal and you've got a slow like doesn't cost a lot of mana, doesn't do a whole lot. They, they tried to make it like, okay, you'll have time to make a decision, so you want to kind of like, okay, do I want to spend all this mana or do I want to conserve mana? That that didn't work. And then the mob healing model where they're kind of, they wanted to kind of sort of make changes, that didn't really happen. And then, I don't even, at this point, I don't even know what the hell they promised us at last BlizzCon. That's how bad it is. <laughs> no, it's... So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for a second because it's needed. Ah! <laughs> God. Right. It it, it's funny. It, whenever I, I think about yeah, their promises, especially with the three heal model, it kind of reminds. I kind of, I kind of makes me think of like a bunch of crusty old guys sitting around trying to figure <laughs> out, like, what are the what are the kids like these days? Like, oh, yeah, they t they're gonna totally enjoy sitting around and casting really slow nourishes and healing touches and making interesting decisions. And yet, no, never. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. yeah, it's there. The, this is the third time, and it really it, every time it just seems like you know, guys. This time for sure, we promise we'll get it right. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, so uh, this brings me to before we get back into it's going to show back to more druid stuff because all these healing things just kind of happened recently. There is something that's come up on the PTR now with the updated version of it that might be final. Who knows? But we're going to talk about uh, Etheralus. The Eternal Reward. So this little guy right here is the final step of the healer ring that we're going to finish off in 6-2. Whereas, uh, who cares? You know, stamina, intellect, spirit, haste, you know, fine, whatever. But how the rings work is that one person will activate any of the either tank, DPS, or healer ring, and that will activate all of them in your group. The healer one, however, is that all rings, you'll get 25% uh, additional healing and absorptions for 15 seconds. Of course. But then when the effect ends... All allies get an absorb equal to 25% of all healing done by the empowered allies split evenly on a two-minute cooldown. So you basically have a... An, uh, mm. like, I would it assume... looks, like, it sounds cool. Like, it's like, oh, it's powerful. Yeah, rah. But the problem is it's more absorbs. I would assume, though, that for the 25% the oh. uh, trigger... Right. Um, it counts absorbs used, not absorbs placed. I, I assume that that would be no. The I I would Probably imagine not. so. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably, Probably not. not. Uh, but, does that require more code? Then definitely not. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, the let, let's, oh, go ahead, Jar. Go ahead. No, let's just hope that it's absorbs <laughs> used. Used. But, yeah. Yeah. The the problem with this, unfortunately, is that. Um, if this, we've already covered that druids outside of tranquility have a lower. Uh, sustained throughput. Um, if this is activated um, when we're not tranquilitying or or something of the ilk, um, everyone else, at least the paladins and priests, will scale far further ahead with the benefits of the ring. We know that it's that's just kind of a straightforward given. Um, if we do use it for tranquility, then all that does is just kind of tent pull us up on tranquility even more mm -hmm. because you're now looking to buff tranquility by. 56 percent or yeah. whatever that is. but in, in all fairness like is this even going to show up as healing that's affected by us like it as far yeah, as it like goes under it, you 
I yeah, like I know meters you. don't matter, but is it is the absorb actually going to show under you? Yes. I don't know. It's all I honestly to the person who makes the they, healing. They tweeted it, yeah, that the the log ad would okay. be like you know etheralis affinity you know that's what it'll show up as okay so since we haven't really done testing yet blizzard please for the love of god don't do this <laughs> oh, or it's so hard not to swear right they now. they need to put the rings in the game now and start testing these especially the healer one the dps one fine whatever tank one sure the healing one is like you have to test this because they did. They uh, they did this in Siege, where they tried right. to give abs like absorbs to classes that didn't have absorbs. Didn't like have they tried absorbs. to make healing yeah. sphere have an absorb. The solution to absorbs is not give everyone absorbs. Correct. You get it an just, absorb. It just compounds. You get an absorb. That's that's it, bees. That's the incredible solution. The Once everyone's super, then no one will be. Is that the, is that their idea? Like if everyone can absorb damage, then no one will have to worry about other people absorbing damage. Rejuve now applies an absorb for its full amount up front. Yeah. Congratulations. Like, <laughs> oh, no. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. I understand they don't want to get rid of absorbs completely because then they might of as well just not. axe disc entirely. And they're not going to do that because that'd no. be stupid at this point. But uh, there's got to be something better they can do for healers that isn't more absorb. I mean, this is a simple way out for a healer ring because how else are you going to make something once it expires be effective without it being totally wasted and you having to be like very, very precise on when you pop this cooldown? Sure. But I, I feel like... <sighs> I mean, my, my, well, before I move on, my devil's advocate to this thing is that if you're running like the double priest, uh, I mean the double paladin priest thing and you get the 50%, you get the 25% additional absorbed, if... If it also doesn't accrues all of the healing you do, and it doesn't actually take into account the actual absorbed damage to become the absorbed shield afterwards, the one if you're you're healing that gets the bonus doesn't actually go through because the absorb bonus is too strong. So then like really only paladins and dispriests benefit from this at all. Is that is that making sense the way I'm describing it? Like if the twenty five percent of the of the absorbing makes your healing not heal, then you don't get your healing into the ring proc. Well, the problem is more that okay, once this thing pops and everyone gets just this giant massive shield, um, the absorb classes can continue to reabsorb, reshield everybody. But correct, our hots are just doing nothing for some period of That's time. That's what I mean exactly. Yeah, correct. Because if they're absorbing the damage that's happening during this proc, your additionally influenced healing hots are doing nothing. So then when the ring snaps and they get the, the new rage shield, you get like, and, you know, priests and paladins get, Wah! that's what I mean. The the hope is that for at least that, that um, they could be smart. They could say, you know, druid overhealing counts. I'm not saying that this is good. Oh, it's a band-aid on if... a broken knee. But like... You know, there are ways that they could kind of do it. Well, if they, oh, it's, a, it's they can a make, problematic effect. I don't know if they can make overhealing count because I'm like, I'm looking at like revival. If you snap a revival, all the overhealing counts, it heals for 6 million, and you get like a 1.5 million shield across your raid right after that. So then no one takes damage during that revival shield afterwards. Your healers just stand around. Oh, you know? God. Exactly. Oh, God. Exactly. I, I, I can't even. Exactly. But if, if they don't factor in overhealing, then. Yep. Typically speaking, Resto Druid's benefit with this current use is going to be minimal, at be unless you trank with it. But at that point, it's like... Resto Shaman, too? Yeah, it, it would force us know. to trank. And then at that point, like all we're doing is just making trank an even bigger part of our healing done, which is mm -hmm. just disease. But but if you're arguing at that point, now you're looking at every two minutes if bosses are, like are based around like when you have to do crazy amounts of damage, you like ring proc into a revival, ring proc into a trank, you know, ring proc into an HTT, like, and then that that one healer gets to shine with the ring proc, but that's not how it's gonna work. I really doubt it. And I I feel like it's really worthwhile to mention that. Typically, spe at least from a, a high end rating standpoint, you're not mm -hmm. gonna have a ring finished before you're like That's, deep into farm at that point anyways you're transitioning to like you're a guest uh, co-host right now but, that's what i was gonna bring up exactly it's like this ring you don't will we, matter we, we don't, for we don't need to make farm more boring for healers yeah because the the, top, the bleeding edge of the world guilds right the couple that are there it's gonna take probably four to six weeks to get this ring down like every other stage has been taken right so they'll be done with the entire tier 18 in you know three weeks max okay 
they won't get the rings. Later on progression, like where I am, where Jar is, will have the rings. So that will like just bring the content where it's supposed to be, or will technically nerf the content for us. It'll make farm really easy and boring for you guys. I don't for the the the, the, the guilds that have done in two weeks. I don't know how it's gonna. Uh, it. Mm. Ultimately, I feel like it negatively impacts the healing model by introducing something like this. Unless we get the unless, ring at the start. Right, unless you get it at the yeah. start and they design boss encounters around, around having access to this ring. But then at that point, like all you're doing is introducing a level of macro to kind of band-aid the fact that healing isn't where it should be. Right. So instead of fixing the issue, they're just introducing kind of an additional level of gameplay to try and make your focus more on, well, the healings model isn't where it should be, so instead we're going to give you this option to argue, like, repeatedly about where the most effective use of this of this cooldown is going to go. Right. And that's... Uh... Yeah, you could cloak right <laughs> off the patch for 5-4. I technically... Uh... But the, the healing cloaks, though, were like, yeah, it's like extra like triage, tertiary healing. It just happens. This is yeah, like... Was... This is a huge, like, cooldown dependent oriented, like, raid changing healing. Oh, it's, it's massive. Like, it's, it's also it's yeah. particularly huge, and some classes are significantly better benefited from it. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's 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 not an individual gain. It's still bait. Like I thought, the healing cloak was a pain in the butt. Like it was so obnoxious to deal with. But at least it was a personal. Like okay, if it procs well at the start of a pull, then great, you're gonna do tons of healing. If it, if it doesn't proc when you want it to, oh well, that's life. But with this thing, it's like you're just gonna have to argue with your healers <laughs> oh, on like. Boy. Well, it benefits me more if you use it during this thing when I'm tranking, so it should obviously be used just for me. And it's, eh. We've had what well, that was. There is a little bit of argument in the uh, the D, the the um the DPS version, right? But like the person that pops the ring, that's the person that explodes with all the raid damage. So it just has to be a melee. It's always gonna be on the boss. Big deal. You know, it doesn't matter. The healing one now is totally very, 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 very awkward. Um, yeah. We'll see. I wanted to bring this up a little bit. Not change it. Right. I brought this up, of course, because it's a huge, big healing thing. We brought up an episode for the healing episode. I don't want to diverge us too much more now. Um, moves along into BRF itemization for Resto Druids. So you're, you're tier 17. It's like a big, hard right turn there. Uh, Living Wood Battle Gear. <clears throat> so it's your two piece. Nature Swiftness now works in the next three spells casts. That's kind of cool, I suppose. Four piece, when you cast two sequential healing touches, the mana cost of your next wild growth is reduced by 25%. Yeah. yeah Jabir, they're, they're controlled. You control these, whereas other healing benefits just kind of happen. <laughs> yeah, hey, rest of shaman. But, um, yeah, how, Jar, what do you think? Math me on this one, sir. What, good, bad, awful, terrible, eh? Um, I have no strong love for the four piece set bonus. Um, I, yeah, I don't particularly. Does. Yeah, it's it's bad. <laughs> And and the thing that was really awful is a lot of people voiced concern uh, with Blizzard over this set bonus, and their response is, well, some people do like to play this way, and if you don't, you <laughs> yeah, don't have to use it. Yeah, I know. That was legitimately, it was a blue post. I remember this clearly. They were like, yeah, well, you just might not agree with it. It's situational, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. I guess me and every other druid is just not going to use it. <laughs> It's it's just awful. Um, the two piece is fine. It's not spectacular. Yeah, two piece use makes it. sense. Yeah, it's fun. Good. You'll use what? it. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> oh god. But I, the issue is the four piece is controllable, but it's a mana cost reduction. <sighs> but is mana yeah. even an issue? Like who, who also twenty five. It's it's you're casting you're turning two healing touches. Which by the time you cast them, they're going to be topped off anyway because you know that's how the game is. Sure. And then you're going to save three k mana on a wild growth. 3k mana. Mm. They. <sighs> mm. Whatever Chad was on at the time. Sorry, Salas Dallin was on at the time oh, when no. he said oh. four pieces situational. Uh, he yeah. needs to start sharing because holy crap. He's yeah, like, it's... yeah, in a situation where you are doing tank healing, which if you are. What? What? Then yeah, it's the still a drew. mana lot. Like. I mean, I liked the concept behind it because if you ran with your four piece, then your rotation kind of sort of felt like shaman where it was a bit of a micro game of like trying to make sure that you hit your buttons when you need to and how you need to in the specific sure, order you're sure, supposed sure, to sure. do it in. 
Uh, it, it added a little bit of more interesting gameplay to it, but it was at a it was at a loss of both theoretical throughput and mana because the mana that you saved on wild growth was consumed in your two healing touches. So technically, um, you were actually spending more mana by using the four set, and it's it, there was there's just not a compelling reason to do it. Even if it was just clunky, there still wouldn't have been a very solid reason to do it. If, if that was the set bonus that you had, like let's say it was 50% like it initially was, and you had that set bonus uh, with spirit levels and high mall, mm -hmm. you could probably argue that it would have been worthwhile to do because mana yeah, was just mall, that was, tight. Yeah, right, right, right. True. But uh, and, and it's, it's not also, now. Your, your passive regen while you're casting a really slow healing touch does cover most of the cost of the healing touch just in that two point whatever seconds it takes right. to cast it. But yeah, it's still, it's not, it's, it's such a minor gain for something that forces you to deviate from what is typically ex accepted as our rotation. I, I look at this and I, I hearken back to even like the randomness of the rest of shaman bonus where you get like, you know, free Jesus beams, you get free Jesus beams with healing with, with the, um, chain heals but that's like a throughput gain you don't like all of a sudden think like hey i could probably you don't need to heal them but you can just throw them out anyway and if they heal people or not that's fine but this you have to actually spend mana to save a little bit of mana but you don't actually gain any throughput from it anyway because if you just cast a wild growth without the healing touches you would save mana if they would have made it like if you cast two healing touches then your next wild growth does more healing more healing yeah. then you single target it would have heal to gain AOE heal. It, it would have offset itself a little bit better and that sure. that kind of sort of plays itself into uh the base functionality of what your mastery was where yeah. you want to cast a single target heal to get it up so that all of your other healing does more healing yeah hot healing um, does more. yeah yeah right so if, if they would have made it something like that then you might have gone for it but there's so many lost GCDs that you could otherwise be rejuve blanketing the raid that you can't yeah. do because it makes the rotation so tight where you don't have any time to do anything other than healing touch, healing touch, swift mend, wild growth. And it was, again, I know Blizzard hates the word clunky, but give me a better word to use, please. No, it's it true. If, just, if you're yeah, using very, mana very, neutral, very clunky. If you're using mana neutral spells in between wild growth, it's a 10 second. Wi Sorry. Like eight and a half second window with GC with cast time, um, whatever the case might be, ten second window, four and a half of that is tied up in healing touches, and one of them is the swift man you need for Soul of the Forest, so you have this little tiny window to cast rejuves. Then God it's... forbid you have to move. Yeah, which if anyone saw the PTR testing for the first, the second boss in six point two, there's not a lot of uh, standing still happening in uh, that boss anyway. If you so. cast two rejuves, your next wild growth becomes an absorb. <laughs> Daniel, please! <laughs> oh my god, no! Ah, uh, no! Well, yeah, that get, that gets a a, a shout. So but, do uh, you do you do you two piece gear only? Do you four piece yeah. ever? I guess you no. Just, just a two piece, yes. Four piece, no. No, I, I mean. Think, I Oh, I even tried using four piece on blast furnace progression because in phase one you're doing a considerable amount of single target healing. Oh, sure, 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 sure. But it wasn't even worthwhile then, and that was ah. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, you're just you're just. I mean, I'm just just using germination and just double hotting the bomb people, and there's not a lot going on. Right. I mean, the the gloves, shoulders, and pants. I mean, the problem is that the off set pieces some of them have terrible itemization i've heard that yes yes yeah so the gloves shoulders and pants are all multi-strike haste mastery which are our three better stats sure um after that honestly the rule of thumb is higher eye level typically wins whatever you have available i mean depending where you are in the gearing system if you're getting a warforged piece you know more int more of the stats you need there's no rigid guide about what pieces to have or on spec onset or offset so you said again just to recap which three pieces are good uh well good is is, is difficult because they're not the, the the i mean gloves and shoulders are your lower um intellect pieces but gloves shoulders and pants are i believe are all multi-strike haste mastery in some mm -hmm. combination of the two okay because you're you're leading right into the spec specifics now so what wrestler do you actually want to care about spec wise 
And that obviously your your five piece set, your your all your five pieces of your set are never going to be perfectly itemized where you want every five piece. This is not like how it's going to work, right? Blizzard I don't think has done that since like Sunwell, where you wanted your entire eight piece set when they added the three extra ones. Like all your set pieces are great, um, but there was a simpler time back then. Um, so your mastery harmony, right? So your direct healing is increased by a percentage, and then casting direct heals grants you an additional percentage bonus to your periodic healing effects for 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. But then, like, your stat priority, your attunement, is haste, naturalist. Which, how does haste interact with rest of druids, Jar? How does that work? Uh, well, I mean, now that you have no swift rejuvenation, obviously lowers right. your GCD of rejuvenation, which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, it, incre it decreases the time between hot ticks okay. um, for all of your hots. Now, uh, They've removed the need for breakpoints by creating the partial tick that exists at the end of a hot. So yep. whatever whatever fraction of time, you know, of your normal hot interval, a tick interval, remains at the end of a hot, you get as a final tick. Sure. To be honest, most of the time that's an overheal anyway yep. uh, with rejuvenation. Well, the two, so, the I mean, two heals before that could be overheal too. So. Yeah, yeah, right. So, I mean, but decreasing the time between ticks is still pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, the... Right now, the kind of perceived weighting or stat priority is obviously intellect first and foremost, uh, haste, then mastery, then multi-strike, then crit, then versatility. Although, kind of as we touched on earlier, there are definitely some times where you could argue haste and mastery could flip-flop. Right. I think it's what Affinity wanted to talk about right now is that you don't need to care about haste very much. I've never gone haste. I mean, I've toyed around with it a little bit, but I, I never saw any real compelling reason to go for haste. But I mean, like I said earlier, I typically haven't rejuved as much as other druids have. Like if you actually look at my breakdown for a lot of things, I am very, very heavy on wild growth. Even when mana was a huge concern, I was always wild growth oriented, uh, which a lot of druids didn't go. So in that case, mastery is going to be better because it's, you know, you're just doing more healing as opposed to faster healing. Um, so technically you get the partial tick. I mean, I'm not, yeah, but it's at the end. Right. I mean, the, the partial tick at that point is almost always guaranteed to be overhealing uh, unless some God given miracle occurs and it doesn't. So I've, ha! I mean, haste uh, yeah. isn't, isn't interesting. It's an okay stat because it is the attunement. It makes it closer to mastery mm -hmm. in a vacuum where they're, you know, the healing model is what Blizzard said it would be. Then haste would be the, you know, the go to for sure option. But, it's really, I, I've always kind of looked at it like mastery makes my wild growth do more healing, and I might as well try and get as much healing into my wild growth as I can before it overheals. So to me, that ends up being, you know, a little bit better. Yeah, I, I always have wanted more. I mean, I I kind of was quoting you to the generally accepted list. I typically sure, would want to sure. prioritize mastery over haste, specifically because I always want my food to be mastery. Right. Um, if well, back when we were using the feasts, obviously, I wanted food. My food to always be mastery. Now I just eat mastery food. Um, but yeah, I think that's what it comes down to. I think you want some degree of haste to make sure you're not sluggish, that you're getting your spells off at a reasonable amount right. of reasonable clip. But uh, since our mastery is very linear and always 100 percent effective, if you're curating it, then it's a an extremely reliable stat. Okay. And it's it's also worth noting that haste doesn't really benefit tranquility like at all. It doesn't cast faster? Um, it does. Yeah. It casts faster, it, but it doesn't get any extra right. ticks. Ma mastery ends up oh, doing a significant uh, uh, yeah. Mastery does a significant like larger I don't know. It just it does better for for tranquility in particular and huh. uh as as something we do need to talk about uh tranquility is a an extremely massive portion of our balance right now sure, and sure. it's important but it's like you know you're you're buffering a spell that does a, a very large percentage of your healing. Yep. That's uh, true. Completely agree. Hmm, interesting. Um weapon enchant preference then? Do you run the mastery enchant I'm assuming? Okay. Spirit. Spirit still? Yeah, I've been running the Mark of Shadow Moon. To Spirit. At, the, at, at this point, you could probably... I mean, with the gear that I have, it's like 701 eye level with like a, a mythic black hand, uh, like a, a Warforged mythic black hand trinket. Right. It has like 835 spirit on it or yeah, something. Yeah, I saw that. Just a little jealous. bit of spirit. A little bit of spirit. Like, it's stupid. <laughs> a bit. So, I mean, at the point that I'm at, I could probably go mastery instead, but it's... I mean, it's pretty marginal at that point. So, but... 
Do you think two jar spirit enchant? Yeah, yeah I've just been rolling with it. I don't have the autoclave yet, uh, mm-hmm. but likely, you know, I, I, I could rethink things once I do. So how? What about trinket preferences then? I would imagine that the the black hand trinket pretty good. Is the candle still sticking up, or can you actually get no, the candle? No, uh, the, can, the candle actually maths out to a pretty modest amount of spirit. Uh, it's half of um, you know, half of the to chew toy. Uh, okay. I think most druids kind of at the end game are probably running the mythic chew toy and their autoclave. Uh, that seems to be a general consensus. I, the real value behind candle, I think, was just the static intellect that it had on it. But for the early tier. Uh, Oh, right, but, uh, yeah. but I mean, like, Holy Paladins used the candle a lot longer than Resto Druids did, but Holy Pallies also weren't as tied in his spirit as we were in uh, early progression. Okay. So I, I think that's kind of where you, you see the disparity there uh, in that regards. Okay. Yep. I mean, uh, the, the fourth, even the, the fourth tier Dark Moon Fair trinket and the, I think the 685 Chew Toy both math out to twice the regen, well, twice the spirit as the candle, but obviously the candle provides more throughput. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, kind of, I mean, part of it has to do with when we're pairing up with people who do more absorbs when you're really just trying to throw a lot of stuff out there to see if it sticks and catch what you can catch, you know, the regen becomes pretty important. Yeah, well, that's that's the the realm you're trying to play in now is you're trying to snipe other heals so you can actually do your own damn job. So I guess mana might become a thing. If it was in a world where it didn't matter as much, then... You just do your job and throughput and go for it. But um, I, I want to touch on this briefly. I wanted to kind of wait to the after show to do this, but I want to move on to this and then get to the little commercial break and then get to all the talent choices. Patch six point two so far has yeah uh, choices right? Affinity choices. Yeah, choices. Um, patch six point two has no resto druid changes noted yet. And uh, end of the world is coming. Oh no! Well, right. I mean, we obviously got over in the show up to this point right now that there is. Obviously, some some issues to be had, but there'll be no. I would say they're not going to make any giant sweeping class changes, but they're removing aspect of the fox. They're removing amplify magic. They're buffing diva ore to be both physical and magic damage reduction. <sighs> I can't see why they. Oh, and they buff to... resto shaman. Yeah, buff... resto shaman got a pretty nice buff as well. Because they needed that, I'm sure. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, we're working part of as wants... intended. Mm. Yeah. Part of me wants to say it's early in in the PTR oh, cycle. It's very early. Yes. Um, I mean, you're probably maybe looking at the earliest release date being um, like when does July. the Final Fantasy expansion come out? Late is that July. June, is that July? Oh. Is it? I don't um, even know. I would, I it would was hope. like it was like Juneish or Julyish, I think. So that's like the absolute earliest you're gonna see it. They're gonna do yeah. a lot more changes. Uh, the first test that they put up was literally like intended to be a patchwork esque like let's look at DPS tweaks. Of course. Uh, and they always seem to leave healing changes for the most part till the end of a patch cycle. Um, and then, you know, we basically get a dick in the box and that's it. Um, I, I'm not holding my breath for any sweeping class changes that would really make Resto more viable. I would like for them to change Tranquility to be instant but not like revival. It, it'll be a hot, like it should be an instant cast. So you're not stuck channeling and then have a hot component to it. Like the old tranquility did. Um, but I, I wouldn't honestly anticipate even seeing something like that going down the pipeline uh, for six, two. That's, that's probably more or less like a new expansion I, I guess, class change. But with those it just seems change... like it continues to be like, yeah, we'll get you guys next time. Yeah. I don't, they do that with everybody though. I mean, they did that with monks. Sure. Like, I had a huge conversation with Salas Dallin at, at BlizzCon, and he was like, oh, yeah, we've well, got all these things. And then he tweeted about it, too, where he was like, oh, hey, we've got all these class changes that we're going to do, blah, blah, blah. Like, Monk is going to be completely different, but, you know, they, they tried toying with it, but they were like, oh, we should do that in expansion because it's such a big change, and then mm-hmm. nothing happened. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if they do something similar again. Um but I mean, that's more or less the healer model than it is the class itself. If the healer model is where it needed to be, we'd be in a great spot. Yeah. What do you had to add, though, Jar? You had something? Uh, no, I think it's pretty much covered. I mean, it they're they're really hesitant to make. They're, they're always going to be reticent to make any changes, kind of midstream. And I think I kind of have a feeling they've just come to a realization that their damage model failed in what they intended and they're just kind of cutting bait and they're probably just going to wait until 7.0. I, but I don't, 
I guess I don't feel that because they're making these changes to Aspect of the Fox, Amplify Magic, and Devo Aura. Like, yeah, they'll make more sweeping-ish kind of class-oriented, or these all three of these really are kind of like healing-oriented changes. Um, where originally we would thought like all healing-oriented damage reduction cooldown should be on healers only, but they still gave Aspect of the Fox to hunters and Amplify Magic to mages. And with all of those being gone, obviously that's a pretty big change to the healing game because oh. you needed them. I have, I really kind of curious if they're going to have to nerf the crap out of Mythic Black Hand when the patch comes out, just so people can actually go back and do them again if they want to, if they have to, because you can't do that Fox. Um, They'll do an HP nerf, yeah, I'm sure. I guess. Yeah, God, mm -hmm. I guess. just though. Those are huge. Those are new to Warlords, and they're already gone a patch and a half in. The reason it's why they're taking really them surprising. Yeah, the reason yeah. why they're taking them out is actually makes perfect sense. If you sure, if you sure, kind of sure. look beyond who is impacted by the change, you should not have game changing abilities on one class. Mm. Um, I mean, and they are. Well, Fox is game changing. Let's mm -hmm, be honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so that's poor gameplay and poor design because it forces you to have hunters. If you don't have hunters, you're going to have a significantly harder time on certain mechanics. But yeah, I mean, druids get hit really hard because it's one of the few ways, since symbiosis is gone, to yep. protect ourselves. I don't know. I, I didn't see a reason why symbiosis was even removed in the first place. To go back to, to mists, all the druids in chat right now are going to be like, give me back my symbol size! But, you know. I just like I just like Spirit Walker's Grace on the fights that it was relevant. Everything sure. else, I really didn't care. Yeah. Um, it, you know... When, I, when we were doing progression on Thogar, I liked when we were doing kind of those like weaving around the uh, the flame throwing trains. Uh, there was a couple points where I was tasked with with tranquility, so I actually used enchanted bark to make sure the the ads couldn't interrupt me. Sure. Um, and I had fox, and I just tracked on the run, and I was golden. But not being able to do that kind of stinks. Yeah. We'll have to see. I don't know. Anything else on this kind of stuff? I don't want to harp too much on 6.2. Everything could change. They could put them back in the game. I, I doubt it. Uh, Nerf disc? I, <laughs> yep. I've said it before on the show before many, many times. I think Powered Shield needs to not be instant cast with no cooldown. But that's the last time I'll say about that. So, yeah. I'll move us along real quick here. And uh, tell you guys a little bit some things about my behind, the, behind the scenes communities and things you may not know about right now. The biggest one, of course is the very, very awesome, very, very sexy summonstone.com built up and run by Skullflower. I have it on the Resto Druid blog right now, too, that is done by Lava Thing. And uh, if you want some more Resto Druid information, you can go check that out, of course. If at the top bar, they are building more guides, all of Azor Therian's guides to Hunter right there at the top. Mage is coming soon. we got three guides for Monk. we got some Holy Retribution stuff. we got some Pre-Shadow stuff right there. Everything is coming soon. Elemental's there. I don't know about the enhancement guide right now. Uh, hit Fire Nova, uh, hopefully win game. But yeah, if you guys want some awesome, really, really clean guys that have tons of rotation talents, talent synergy, glyphs, gear, stats, boss guides, add-ons, and macros for almost every class here, Blood, Frost, Holy DK, go check out summonstone.com. Just, just bookmark that. Just, just get out of there. Just bookmark it. Go for it. Additionally, if you want more of a Jar's Corner of the World for Resto Druid inside information, Go check out uh, R4 Healing Touch. It's rank healing touchwordpresscom It's his blog where he updates and posts about all things Resto Druid. Got a nice little Rubik's Cube uh, blog post right now. I think the Rubik's Cube makes my head hurt, so I'm not going to read through that. But if you're Resto Druid and want to read this stuff, it goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. His blog posts are pretty crazy. Look, it keeps going. We're going. We're doing it. We're doing things. So go check out his post right there, rank healing touchcom well, dot .wordpress.com. Of course, it'll be in the YouTube description box as well. And then if you want to have seen our new website, look at this. The background is still a placeholder right now, of course, too. We had our episode just previously. I haven't updated it yet. We're still working on some stuff on the back end, so I haven't updated the last week's episode. But new website. It looks like a website now. It's pretty nice. Everything is linking there. Our new Fire Lord's favorite page is coming eventually, which will be a one-stop place where... Yes, there are great websites out there like Summon Stone and Rank for Healing Touch and all these different little blog website websites. But the new Fire Lord's favorite page that we're building on the Final Boss TV website is going to be like a I play X and Y and Z class. Is there a IRC or and or website or blog that I can look at? You can go to that page and it's all going to be listed by class and spec. And you can go there and find something for your class. If you're new 
changing roles because it'll be all in one place. Because right now you don't know You're searching on the internet, searching on Twitter or whatever. We're trying to put it all into one spot for you guys. That's coming soon. And then, of course, if you've missed any episodes of Final Boss TV, you can go check out our YouTube. We're also on iTunes and Stitcher. Our, our podcasts are right here. But, uh, yeah, all of our content as well, and all of the side content and goofy stuff and fun things are all up on our YouTube page right now as well. Again, there are 77 episodes beforehand here. And uh, all the boss kills for my POV, the extra content we do. There's Infinity and the After Show being salty on the Holy Paladin show, you know. But all the stuff on our YouTube page, so much, so much stuff. It keeps going. There's more. The War Crimes trailer, the On My Own Machinima parody. It does more. It keeps going. It, it, wait, it keeps going. You get the idea. So go check us out. The links are down below. And of course, everything you need to know is on FinalBoss.tv. But all right. Talent choices, gentlemen. Our, huh. our, <laughs> our, next our, question. Next okay. question. All right. Next. <laughs> moving on. Uh, Topo is up. Level 100 talents for Resto Druids. You got Moment of Clarity, uh, where Omen of Clarity now lasts for seven seconds instead of one cast. You have Germination. You can apply two rejuvenations to the same target, and it adds three seconds to the overall duration. And Rampant Growth, which your Swift Men's Healing is increased by 20%, and it consumes your regrowth or rejuve on the target, but has no cooldown. So, uh... Huh. Let's, let's, let's cut to the chase. If you're looking at the talents by themselves, only yes. one of them is actually a talent. Um, Moment of Clarity is not viable. Rampant Growth in a Vacuum is actually a terrible talent. If mm. Seal the, Soul of the Forest didn't exist, it would you wouldn't even look at it. You wouldn't even give it a glance. Right. It is strictly a, a downside for a spell that's a very small portion of your healing done for very little gain. Um, so Germination, I, I'm assuming jar uh, mathematically it's the most superior talent mm -hmm. uh, by itself and in a balanced raid environment right i i would is there any argument for like because people like when we bring up challenge modes is moment of clarity i guess good for challenge modes because you're scaled down in your gear and your mana might be a problem is that a possibility i i would think germination would be still better, better. i mean yeah. i i like to even for challenge modes like silver and gold mm -hmm. when i was like really early on um because rejuvenation is so cheap, and having two of them and having them last for longer is good, and it gives you more tank healing. It's true. I, that makes sense to me. Have you been running germination like the whole expansion so far, Affinity? Yeah, I, it's my my issues with Moment of Clarity is it's an RNG talent more sure. or less. Of course. Uh -huh. um, I mean, we we still benefit from our our out of combat procs, and you know it's 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 good, but it's not something that you rely on. And and going from a reliable talent like germination uh, into moment of clarity, which yeah, you'll get a couple extra casts off, but there's no guarantee you're going to get it when you want it. Like that's that that makes moment of clarity in my eyes less appealing because mm -hmm. again, healers don't want to compete with rng they want to have control. static resources and control over what they're doing at all times all right. yep. and if, it, if it worked for wild growth it might be a different story entirely when oh. it yeah when it worked when when you're out of combat procs did work for uh for wild growth it was i, I early game it was really really strong so, probably does but. the omen of clarity bonus not work on wild growth no it's just regrowth only so, Omen of Clarity, to, to back up on this one, is your periodic healing from Life Bloom has a 4% chance to cause you to enter a clear casting state, causing your next regrowth to be free. It was Wild Growth on beta for a right. while, but they realized it was way too good. I don't understand why that's... Why isn't... It, if it says it lasts for 7 seconds, so you get 7 seconds of regrowth spam? Woo! Yeah. Why yeah, so you have, to, you have to you get, like, what, 3 turn. Yeah, Omen of Clarity, to back on my back in my day, used to be any healing spell. <laughs> it's just that's it's only it was regrowth any growth now. Ugh. It was it, well before it was it was what regrowth and healing touch because it had to be a casted spell. You couldn't like get a free a free wild growth because it was instant, right? Right, but wild growth's now a but, casted spell. So, right, and then they they changed yeah. it to compensate because they realized that it was probably too potent. <sighs> well, that's bugs. Yeah. And. The thing is, with rampant growth, the reason why I think there's an issue with rampant growth, and I've used it, I'm not, it's not ideal, but I've messed around with it. Like I said, running with three absorb healers for farm <laughs> content, right. it's one of the few. Just, and my healing breakdown is just like wild growth, all the things. Um, but the reason why rampant growth is really unhealthy is, is it requires a second talent to work. 
Ugh. Long ago, it's true. back when we had to bark skin to tranquility, because yep. it was the only way to avoid the pushback and the interrupt, Blizzard specifically came out and said, no, we don't want you to have to do that. It is unhealthy. You should never have to pair two spells together to get them to function. So they mm. gave pushback immunity to tranquility. Then they go and create a talent that literally is only viable by taking another talent. And it just seems to kind of fly in the face of their, well, that's not new for them, but flies in the face of their kind of <laughs> previous yeah. di- you know, directive. Yeah, I don't, I mean, maybe rampant growth is good. In, I'm, I'm trying to find the reason. Like, is it good in PvP because it's an instant heal and it's stronger? But I don't, eh? Only with Soul of the Forest and only if you're literally just, if you're just like clockwork, every right. wild growth, every 10 seconds, always empowered. Right. And you're using it also to use your, uh, use your swift mend to, I mean, your, your regrowths are actually pretty huge. Um, I, under, I, I imagine. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, you could put, you could be popping your two piece, your nature swiftness, you swift mend, you like do a regrowth for well over 100k. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can do interesting things with the mechanic, and you always kind of fist pump when you snag a rejuve at like two seconds or one second left. Like It's like, all right, sweet, I did that. But it's not healthy, and I only used it when it, it was just one of the few options to do any healing at all because there was so much absorbing running around. Yeah. I think I toyed with it on Brackenspore a little bit, but it really wasn't i mean it was okay but you're it, i mean i was basically trying to use it as burst healing like have a you know a regrowth hot and a rejuve hot and just like swift mend swift mend but it wasn't it wasn't anything that was better or worthwhile at that point no it's it's a side option that really only works if you're if like wild growth is one of the few things you cast that gets anything done because right. of the way the absorbs are in your group but typically speaking it's not ideal i mean germination really is your de facto option Right. Yeah, and that's that's a probably run into with the Holy Paladin show. Like double beacon, beacon of faith is just too good. So now they the Blizzard wanted all the talent choices to be all be like too good, right? So then the, you have to pick one of them. You get one of these two good talents um, out of the three in each tier. But it really has not been that way. And I even asked the devs on our interview when Warlords was coming out, like they had known that their level 100 talent balancing wasn't good enough to each other. And it's still funny to find that this late in the expansion that there's still that issue. That um, you have like a choice and your off choice is just germination. I think moment. Oh, go ahead. No, I think just moment of clarity and rampant growth need to be completely redesigned. Uh, they yeah. rampant growth is unhealthy. Um, it fosters a link between two talents as a mandatory function mm-hmm. that shouldn't be. Um, it, it's just not ideal. You shouldn't have a talent that requires another talent. And moment of clarity just needs to change. I mean, both they, of them really do. And they've like interestingly like buffed or fixed or bugged. I don't know, like uh, one of my talents with uh, elemental fusion. In, in the beta testing and early on in the game, uh, you couldn't, you basically get an 80% stronger uh, flame shock, right? But that wasn't able to be spread. But now, all of a sudden, in some hotfix recently, it's spreadable. So, like, it makes the talent, like, not awful sauce. Like, just randomly, just happened. We just, like, Purge was like, hey, guys, this is doing this thing on the, on the, hey, do you see this? So, I, I, why can't Moment of Clarity then extend to all druid spells like all your your healing spells would that make it more than awful because then you could cast for seven seconds arguably only four spells free eh? maybe yeah. it's uncontrollable still talents are still bad. random that's what i mean it's still random but no rng is just bad like like for yeah. a, you 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 want talents to affect your gameplay decisions. Yes. Similar to in the past when they've made set bonuses that alter rotations. Talents should change what you do. They should make things interesting and different. They should foster multiple play styles within the same spec. Sure. So I right now, I mean, they really don't. An RNG talent that could happen when you have nothing to heal. Correct. Is just miserable really yeah but you also don't want just more cooldowns though you don't want it to become like you want moment of clarity to become a cooldown where you click the button it's a two minute cooldown to cast for free for seven seconds like that you don't need more cooldowns either so... just give give us a talent that give us talents that make our spells interact right now our spells don't interact with each don't other interact. much we don't really have Honestly, a lot of synergy 
I feel like the talent the talent tree's always been a problem. Like right. they they always try and play this like we don't want a cookie cutter build, but in almost all cases outside of very minor situations or boss encounters, basically every single class has like a go to here's the talents you want. Sure. Honestly, I I would be happier with the talent system if they got rid of all of the ones that that allude to having choice and just making it like you've got your CC tier, you've got your speed tier, and then right. like is the case with the druid tier, you've got your like the utility Ysera's tier. gift tier. Yeah, your yeah. utility tier. Like I feel like they probably need to run their talents that way uh, as opposed to trying to elude at having choice when in, in reality yeah, you, you never do. Doing this show now for going on almost two years, it is interesting to see how there are, like obviously your, your tier 45 tier is sort of like this different like CC oriented tier, right? With Between like Fairy Swore, Mass Entanglement, and Typhoon. That makes sense. I guess why don't, why don't they have the talent trees in a way that like each class gets their, you know, movement, utility, maybe like CC oriented, cooldown, you know, damage or healing impacting, it doesn't always like that. It's always very, like, wishy-washy. It's never, like, the same. So then certain classes have, like, different talent choices that just don't work at all. And they'll never take them. Right? So it's it's still an awkward system, I feel. That it's just not... Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're, you're entirely correct. <sighs> it's it's so It's so weird to me. And some talent choices, some talent interactions, some some abilities you gain from talents, totally great. Uh, I feel like I have a weird way of looking at this from my perspective from Enhancement Shaman, because I actually move my talents around fairly frequently, and I have some choices. But other classes just have not had choices from, like, mop forward. And it's it's weird. So how about your other other talent trees right now? We're going to go backwards up the, up the ladder here. Uh, Heart of the Wild, Dream of Scenarius, Nature's Vigil. Heart of the Wild and, and Thread. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, why Heart of the Wild for Resto Druid? Why is that like tranquility? The... Yeah. Yes, abuse tranquility. The one thing that we yeah. basically stand, you know, it's our crutch. Yeah. You use it if, if it's a short fight. We have one tranquility, like Flamebender. Just yeah. it does like a million percent of your healing. Long fights where you're doing three uh, tranquilities plus, you're going to get two Heart of the Wilds in. Yep. So, man. It's just good. So you're up against I mean, Heart of the Wild. So when activated, it decreases all healing by 35% and dramatically improves Druid's ability to tank, deal melee damage, and cast spells. Um, so there's, there's that counter to it. But obviously, the 35% additional healing is a pretty big deal. For 45 uh, seconds. For 45 seconds, exactly. I, that, yeah. Uh, Dream of Scenarius, though. Wrath damage by 20% increase, and your Wrath spell will then try to atonement heal. It heals for 150% of the damage done, including multi-strikes as an atonement based heal and nature's vigil, which is a 1.5 minute cooldown that lasts for uh, 30 seconds. If I were to believe, um, yeah. And restoration, it's all single target healing spells will also damage a nearby enemy target for a little bit. And then all single target healing and damaging spells and abilities will also heal party members by yada, yada, yada. It's like the, this extra trickle. It makes all of your damage and healing do damage and healing triage more or less. Um, I mean, and there are situational uses for Dream of Scenarios, but I, I believe, yeah. it's, it's only if you can't abuse Heart of the Wild. It's it's a checklist. I, I was kind of I was mapping that. You kind of ask yourself, can I abuse Heart of the Wild for tranquility gains? Yes or no? Yes, take Heart of the Wild. No. Can I stand around in Wrath for any period of time in this fight? Is that going to get me anything? Yeah. Yes, take Dream of Scenarios. No, take Nature's Vigil. Hmm. I mean, yeah. it with with the healing damage increase recently. I'm sure Dream of Scenarius is fun on farm. Yeah, it's better. a fifteen percent <laughs> increase to something that's like six to seven percent of your healing done. Right, and isn't isn't actually if you're being a resto druid and you want to actually do damage? I know this back when butcher was a thing. Uh, our resto druid at the time would hard of the wild and then just spam um, uh, offensive spells like Starfall yep. and Wrath. I, I did mean, that. You for could our first burst kill. for like thirty k. It was not bad. I did like two, two and a half million damage on yeah. Butcher. Yeah. Like, okay, fine. That's cool. But again, right. you take Heart of the Wild, not Dream of Scenarios. Yeah, Heart of yeah. the Wild for that. It wasn't. It wasn't bad for that. I mean, it was. It was nice to kind of, sort of have additional utility with that. But then it was also kind of a bummer that you were using a cooldown 
to do more damage as opposed to like what you're in the raid for. Um, yep. It made the difference between killing the boss and not killing the boss in most cases, but it was, I wasn't overly excited about using it for that purpose, really. No, I don't think anyone was, because also you just, you, you felt, it didn't feel fun, because now everyone else right. was doing their job, and you're like, all right, time for me to join the party 45 seconds into the fight. So, but now that, that brings it back to the whole point that you just brought up, Jar, about like taking a talent to improve and interact with something else only for that. And if you're only taking Heart of the Wild because it makes Tranquility even better, that's... Not healthy? No. Like, I don't <laughs> that know. was accurate. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Uh, but it's also it... the only real viable option, so you just kind of deal with it. That's yeah, so like, I mean, we've, we've, we've gone through it before, and it would kind of be old hat, but Tranquility is just an unhealthy amount of our healing done, yeah. so something that also increases that unhealthy amount more yeah. makes us look better. So now I'm thinking again, uh, this is back in the, the hopeful world here, that if the healing metagame worked well, where like you wouldn't be full or dead and healing would take a while, I guess I could imagine Druid of Scenarios and Nature's Vigil being good because I could imagine like blanketing the raid with germination and then Nature's Vigiling, you just get all this extra healing that's flying off from all your hots all over the place. Like, well, remember, could, Nature's it, Vigil used to be stronger. Yeah. Like this oh, is a, a be, kind of a... It needs to be 30%. And it had a twelve percent throughput boost flat. Wow! So it got mm, it got hammered. They, yeah, they kind of nerfed the ninety talent tree into into the ground, where you just kind of like meh, meh, or meh, 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 meh. Yeah. Meh. So how one, about one of them makes your trank better? Yeah. Right. Let's move it to sixty talents then. So soul of the forest, incarnation yes. tree of life, no. and force of nature. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, Force of Nature did way too much healing, and it was pretty legit, and, and I was actually it. enjoying it. And they nerfed it into the ground. They did buff them again on 6-2, but they're still not really viable. Um, no, they're, they're definitely some percent lower. They're also incredibly flawed in their casting logic. Um, yeah. Right now, I cast it. As, let's say it has a 2.2 second cast. Uh, it's around for 15 seconds. It'll cast six times, which is 13.8 seconds. And then it starts casting its seventh spell, and it fades away out of existence right. mid-cast and loses right. the entire spell. So wait, wait, hold yeah. on. How does but do you, like? I love the whole Treant gameplay. I think it's very druidy. It's very flavorful and very loreful. But like, so it's an instant cast, a twenty-second recharge with three charges, where the Treant you summon will instantly cast Whipman on your current target, and then they'll start casting Healing Touch. Yes. And it's it, they don't last long enough to like get off. Well, you don't you can't get a partial cast? spell. It's not like a hot where you can get like a partial tick. There are right. hard cast times. So if it doesn't have enough time to cast the last spell, then all that time gets wasted. Uh, what? I, mean... I think they need to change it so that it's little mini me's running around bonking people on the head. Like just 20 of them running around hitting people. I mean, what if what if the force cool. of nature like when the so the you spawn it as an instant, it casts a swift man on your target, right? And you can like boom 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 if you want to pull all three of them out at once. And then it casts healing touches randomly as kind of a smart heal. But then when it expires, it like poofs and AoE heals because it's like a tree. The, the way you make, personally, the way you would make this viable is it would ca it would have 15 seconds. It would cast, five, you could make it cast and fit an even number. Like you could yeah, set that, the cast, that, that work fix, fix the cast time such that it divides perfectly and it finishes a spell at the end. You know, it, don't make it scale with haste on cast speed, but similar to Diablo, where attack speed buffed pets' damage by some percent, have your haste buff the throughput of the Force of Nature, have your crit, your mastery, your multi-strike, sure, all buff sure, the sure, throughput sure. of the Force of Nature, and then let it scale with all of the stats and have 100% effective uptime. Just, then you could tune it, but right now it's just... Poop. I mean, it's also worth noting, though, that even if they do fix Force of Nature, this goes back to the whole coupling a talent into another spell. Right. Where wild growth is so much of our healing, and you're trying to snipe as much healing as you can. And Soul of the that, Forest is too good. Yeah. Soul of the Forest buffs your wild growth so that you get more healing out of your wild growth before it overheals. So yeah. it's, it's hard to justify going anything other than Soul of the Forest because... It makes wild growth that much better. And so, uh, I, I don't remember ever looking at Soul of the Forest and going, I guess I can Swiftman Rejuve. Like, you always exclusively use it for wild so growth. So now here's, I'm look, reading these talents, all right? Remember, reading Moment of Clarity, I'm going to compare these two, right? So, Omen of Clarity lasts seven seconds instead of one cast. 
and Omen of Clarity only works on regrowth. Soul of the Forest is when you cast a Swift Mend, you gain Soul of the Forest. Soul of the Forest reduces the cast value of your next healing touch by 50%, increases the healing of your next regrowth and rejuvenation by 100%, or increases the healing of your next wild growth by 50%. There's so much going on in that talent. Why isn't that a 100? Like, that's it would, it would powerful. Omen of Clarity is like, I get three free regrowths. Or four. Yeah, your yeah. Soul of the Forest like, is the by hell? far the strongest talent. Well, it's also, so good. Well, here's the thing. Look at think. Okay, if you look at if if mana was legitimately an issue, if you're looking at a fight where mana was a genuine strain, moment of clarity doesn't do it. As much as I'm not a huge fan of the talent, incarnation is a regen talent. Really, uh, it's a situation where your wild growth becomes 33 percent better while it's up, which means you get one free wild growth over its cast. Right. All of your rejuves are fifty. They cost what a third less, a half less, something like that. It's a significant mana reduction. And with germination, you can double up on people as needed. Correct. That actually can work like an interesting um, regen talent. Sure. I, again, I'm not advocating that you take it outside of maybe niche situations, but compared to Moment of Clarity, it's not, you know. I mean, I, I kind of, I'm looking at these talenters thing. again. It just to me, it kind of feels like like incarnation, tree of life, germination, and soul of the forest should all be your 100s because they're all like big gameplay changing you know swift men interaction with soul of the forest either like big single target heal big hot or big wild growth incarnation a cooldown or germination you get two rejuvenations you know like you have like your big cooldown you have your interactive like rotational one and then you have the passive right now your 100 talents don't <laughs> but forcing us to choose between those three unless you give us yeah. good options in return would be fairly crippling uh, I mean, maybe, uh, but that's the whole point of 100 talents because I have these choices, right? No, I agree, but I'm just right. saying, like, like as is, we still have issues, and then you'd have, I mean, you'd have to have something awesome coming in of that tier. Oh, of tier course, 60. of course, of course. <laughs> but I don't have faith that they would do that. Yeah, no, there definitely it looks like there are problems here. So you guys both agree though, Soul of Forest. I'd imagine nope. if you need to cool down and you're progressing, incarnation could be a thing though. Right? No. It's not terrible. Is no. it just not good though? I it's... messed around with it some, but. It, I mean, it's, you could, you could. It's not like. Um, can you tree of life, heart of the wild, and go ham? Is that it's not good? as it's not as good compared to the sustained healing of Soul of the Forest over the I course of a boss true. encounter, though. I mean, if if it was in its own tier by itself, then I guess it could kind of, sort of, be like a shaman um, AG ish. Yeah. But it's it's not really same level. Mm. Yeah. It was better fight... when you could spam life blooms and then get a ton of like clear cast regrowth. Like that was pretty cool. But it's by it's by itself. It's it's not really that great now. I think I think there was only one fight in. Uh, I used I used Solar Forest for all of um, High Mall, and I think the only fight I toyed around with Incarnation was Blast Furnace, just because when we were learning it, uh, just damage was a little crazy, and I wanted to have a lot more mana, and I wanted to make I want to have tree up every time I tranked. But then I realized that wasn't that big of a deal. Wasn't that big of a deal frustrating i mean it's it's super broccoli form i mean incarnation looks cool but it's just it's just these are power talents and in comparison to 100 which should be power talents they're just not there i guess i don't know that's weird to me uh your last tier that increases or infects your healing at all in infects affects affects with the a uh yasera's gift renewal yes. scenario ward so yasera's gift yeah yeah, yeah. I don't think I've honestly really considered the other talents as a viable option, like ever. Really? Yeah. Like, like someone might somewhere might have done some math on Scenario and Word situationally in some fight somewhere, but it's not worth it. It's Ysera's 9.2 gift is... percent of your mana if mana was a problem again, and then Ysera's gift is just a four percent max heal every five seconds to someone if you're not at full health. It's free healing range. buffer. It's free healing. It's free healing. It's free versus 9.2% of your mana. <laughs> like, what is... Uh, if it, That's the one thing that we got into. I get into this a lot in the show. Is if they're going to put, for, for casters anyway, for healers specifically, talents that line up in a tier where one costs mana and some don't, a lot of the times one that, co that doesn't cost mana is just so much better. To be fair, Sonarian Ward's cost is actually really cheap. The The percentage is misleading because right, Druid base mana is, is really low. small. Oh, okay. It gets multiplied out for when you, if you choose a caster form. Sure. But it's, so it's actually less than a rejuve. 
Okay, but it's gonna heal less than Rejuve, I'd imagine, right? Uh, it's actually pretty potent. Like it does a, a a sizable amount of healing. The problem is, it's just long term. Ysera's gift will do more. Typically. Oh yeah, it it takes every five seconds. How long does the fight last? Eight minutes. Like, pfft. I mean, you're gonna get off. You know, two snaring wards a minute or uh, twelve ticks of Ysera's gift. Like, <laughs> I yeah, that seems kind of yeah. a null issue on that one. Are, are there any talent, I mean, are there any uh, glyph choices you want to talk about real quick before I give you guys some soapbox time, since we're just looking at time right now? Any any glyphs that are really important to Resto Druids that they should be aware there's of? Really only, there's really only one floating spot, as far as I know, for glyph. Well, what are the, I, what are the, just, I guess, what are the two you always take? Then? Uh, it's regrowth and wild growth, I would think. Yeah. yeah one additional target, two second more cooldown, big deal. And then regrowth is the critical strike chance of regrowth by 40%, but no longer has a healing over time. Yeah, it makes it 100% crit chance. Yeah, it's because it's a flash heal, basically. That's what regrowth is, more or less. Mm -hmm. so. I almost always, like, my my third talent, or uh, Glyph, is almost always Stampeding Roar. Yep. Um, Just to make it true. less obnoxious. Yep. I, but... I, I've only changed it to two things. When I was, was in Black Hand, I did do the Dispel Glyph a little bit uh, yeah. just to help in Phase 2. And uh, when, whenever the, on the locations that I was being tasked to tranquility on the train boss, um, the ads were up that could enchant, uh, that could interrupt. So I took enchanted bark. Enchanted that's bark. It. Yeah, it says a little bit there. I mean, I, I've always looked at. I've been a druid before, you know. I druided uh, for quite a while. I've always thought the glyph of wild growth just didn't feel like a glyph. It's like a mandatory thing. I just don't know yeah. why you'd ever not take this. We've taken that glyph since it was created, basically. Yeah, like ex exactly. I don't. It, <laughs> it's pretty bland. Yep, it is. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they should just make regrowth have a slightly longer cooldown, but in fact, one more target and give you guys glyph choices. Because if you're gonna always take a glyph, that just makes the spell the way it. Spo yeah, that's <clears throat> it's awkward. Oh yeah, and treant is mandatory. Oh wait, what? Minor glyph treant. Oh, mandatory. oh God! Yes, treant. please. Yeah. Where is it? Not that I, not that I'm always in that form, yeah. but having having the ability to go to go tree form is is pretty vital to uh to my gameplay. Mm-hmm. Right here. This is right here. This is the most important glyph. I can remove everything else from this talent calculator. That's the best. Yeah, just, yeah. Just I actually actually made a macro to uh, switch back to treant form after Displacer Beast just to make sure. No way. No, I'm kidding. I didn't do that. But that oh. would be pretty cool. You should. <laughs> oh, don't you do you let me astray there? I thought you totally did. That would be awesome. Oh, gosh. It's kind of like how um, most balanced druids have the glyph of flap uh, macroed into, like, everything they do. Pretty good. Glyph of flap mandatory, by the way, for uh, balanced druids. Mm -hmm. I love, I oh, love yeah, the and with that. I forgot about that. The uh, the sprouting mushroom glyph. Oh. Oh. I, I forgot about that one because you've also always used uh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's literally just kind of become something no one even thinks about. Yeah, because. It should be baseline at this point. I don't know yeah. why it's not. That's I, I don't so know why weird. they thought. That's right. Because without it, you actually have to target somebody and put the mushroom at their feet, which is the worst ever. Pretty much. Mm. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Soapbox it. Jar first. What you got to leave your Resto Druid community with? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I probably <laughs> should plan something. Um, I mean, I understand that we harped quite heavily on our drawbacks. Obviously... Our balancing is out of whack. We're really kind of reliant on tranquility. We have our issues. We have, but at the end of the day, um, I mean, we could go on forever as far as the things we have problems with. But if you're a solid player, I mean, outside of really kind of the top end guilds, you know, that you know situations like that I'm in, um, you're going to get by pretty much well enough on skill alone, unless you're raiding with a handful of absorb healers, in which case, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I feel like we've yeah. kind of covered a lot of my gripes, and I don't really want to kind of beat them into the ground too too much. Right. I think that on your note, you're leaving there, just so chat room knows. Obviously, we'll be doing discipline holy priest most likely before tier 18 comes out. However, on final boss, since we're gonna need to like cover that a little bit, um, I have plans for like probably two of each tank healing and DPS like mixed bag episodes. It'll happen in tier 18 to see like what's changing so mm -hmm. that we'll see if resto Druid still has these problems down the line you know five months from now or whatnot uh, we'll see if discipline priests get nerfed you know please r and jesus you know whoever 
we need to pray to for that raptor jesus i don't know who so we'll see Flying spaghetti monster so if you exactly there you go so if chat room is wondering about the how the healing's going to change and if we're going to do more in the episode we're, we're, we'll do that so affinity soapbox you've already screamed once in the show you've gotten two or three more quotes during the episode what do you got <sighs> Words, 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 mm. words, 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 words. And following that, I'm going to take a shot. It is a monk shot Ooh. from Ether Mead. It's, uh, it's a work <laughs> in progress. Bashiach retweeted it, so it must be important, right? But right. This, this sums up my feelings for the class right now. Is it? It's called Blackout Kick. God, that's really good. That is actually unfair to be that good. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so Druid Soapbox, anything? Ah, uh, no, I don't, I don't even want to say anything because I'm literally going to get angry and like have a heart attack or something like, <laughs> no, that, it, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not even specific to Resto Druid. It's in the grand scheme of things, Resto Druid would be solid if the healing model is where it is supposed to be. Right. But it's not. So Resto Druid get the short end of the stick again. Like let's, we're here again. Like, oh my, oh my, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I mean, I think the the thing that makes worse. it so much worse is that, you know, I've been doing the Team Waffle podcast and I was mm -hmm. on here before and <laughs> it's the same thing over and over again. I mean, I think that's what gets gets our goat is they keep making promises and unfortunately the way things end up shifting, we always kind of end up feeling the brunt of it. We kind of take it pretty hard. Right. And that's that's really where the frustration goes because it's not new. I think if it was, you know, where the class that suffers de jour of healers, it would be one thing. But it's just the same thing we voice our concerns with every tier, and it really just doesn't get better. Yeah, we'll see. The Make healing... tranquility instant with a hot over time is a a healing over time over time yes. uh, a, a heal over time component <laughs> as opposed to being a channel and it'll mm. put druid in a little bit of a better place as far as mechanics go make power doesn't fix everything have a four second it, cooldown <laughs> make this priest do something different yeah. holy nova just just let's throw in holy nova fine i don't care <sighs> right i don't care anymore Give it back. <laughs> yeah. spam something different yeah is that it? We good, gentlemen? Is it button time? I think it's time to... Yeah, it's... 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 It's happening. All right, that was that. We went over lots of Rest of Druid stuff. A little bit more of the healing stuff in there. We went over the Legendary Ring, of course. If you have questions for our guests, stay tuned for the after show. We're going to take a quick little break here and then uh, and uh, walk it off, I guess. And we'll take some questions from chat room for about 25 minutes after a little break. But again, our guests today were... We got Jaron from Capital Vices and Rank for Healing Touch. Oh, man, I missed that spell so much. You can go follow Jar at Rank4HT on Twitter. Thank you for being on the show again, sir. One plus year later. Still good <laughs> stuff. It's glad to be back. Awesome. 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 And we had Affinity, who is saying words. You can follow words. him on Twitter as well at AffinityUS. And his new yeah. little side project thingy that may or may have popped up during the show a couple times. It's pretty cool stuff. Drinks Thank and you. stuff. Yeah. You're, you're going to be here for guest co-hosting the Priest one soon. We'll, that'll be a fun episode. <laughs> Good luck. Let's be a blast. <laughs> I might Good actually luck. have like an aneurysm during that show. So oh stay God. tuned for that. Oh God. Watch Affinity die live on stream oh, please. during the Final Boss TV episode. does not endorse anything just fed by Skylar McMahon. Don't, don't, don't even, that's not, not even, no, he's not going to, nothing like that. But I'm next not affiliated with or. Yeah, know, yeah, please, please stuff. no. So Final Boss TV for all of your <laughs> needs. Uh, next episodes, two episodes back to back, the next two Sundays, if scheduling works out well will be melee dps and melee dps because there are lots of those left we're gonna do dps dks on one of the sundays and then retribution paladins on the other and yes i'm gonna see if anna's coming back on the show for that one. Oh god we'll see when we get there this is a special guest for it just to come back on the show but yeah we'll see you guys there for the next two episodes of melee dps funnicity and then we'll do one range dps and then it'll be holy and some priests after that if there's not a break week it's all the out of town math we'll see you for the after show for some q a and thank you for, for watching everybody i just totally fumbled the outro because all the stuff happening in brain you uh -oh. know walk it off this episode right now though we will see you all later thank you very much for watching and until next time everybody <gasps> bye 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 jar can't wave but hopefully he's waving in spirit I i'll wait i'll wait for you <laughs> <Double hit. laughs>